Hello. As Head of Service for Strategic Planning at Argyll and Butte Health and Social Care Partnership, it's my privilege to talk about the work on our first ever island strategy and the public consultation for it. Argyll and Butte Health and Social Care Partnership is entrusted with the planning and delivery of health and social care services for both adults and children across the region. As you'll know, the partnership covers many inhabited islands and 23 to be exact. The Health and Social Care Partnership actually serves more inhabited islands than Shetland, Orkney or the Western Isles, which people more readily recognise as island health boards and local authorities. It has long been our ambition to develop a comprehensive strategic plan tailored specifically to inform planning and delivery of health, social work and social care services on and to our islands. Today, I want to introduce the draft of our island strategy and if you haven't read it yet, it's available on the same website that you use to register for this webinar. The purpose of the webinar is to give you an overview of the strategy and to gather feedback about how to improve the document. We also want to understand what you think our priority areas for the actions should be. The document on the website is not finished yet and the webinar and the overall consultation feedback will inform the strategy. You can submit further feedback about the strategy through a survey, which you can also access on the consultation website. When we rewrote our last strategic plan for the entire Health and Social Care Partnership, we recognised that our role in providing services to island communities was not always reflected in our strategic and operational plans. Also, we actually did not have a very good overview of how we deliver services for all our island communities. The work on the island strategy acknowledges that planning and delivering services for island communities is a complex task. There are a number of structural challenges involved, such as transport links, workforce and seasonal pressures, to name just a few. If it were easy to deliver services which meet the needs of our island populations, we wouldn't need a strategy. But we also want to highlight the positive side of living, of island living, in relation to supporting community well-being, such as engaged communities that are keen to play their part, professionals and volunteers which often cover wider remits than their peers on the mainland, and the many opportunities for developing new service models and ways of working. Work on the strategy started in late 2023, when we convened a short life working group to inform the development of the document. The strategy aims to give an overview of how we deliver health and social care services to our island communities, including a description of the structural challenges which need to be addressed. It assesses what we know about health and social care outcomes for our island communities, and demonstrate what actions the Health and Social Care Partnership is taking, either alone or with partners to maximise the health and well-being of island communities. We have the same vision for our island residents as for the population of our Island Butte as a whole, which is to ensure that all residents have access to high quality and responsive social care, social work and health care services. We want to focus on preventative approaches intervene early and enable individuals to look after their own health and well-being as much as possible. Through this strategy, the Health and Social Care Partnership commits to working with islanders to develop a realistic, a safe and sustainable service models and pathways for each island. The strategy is not a detailed plan for every island. Yes, we have highlighted some examples of recent work but the document is not meant as a detailed plan for each island. It will give overall direction to the Health and Social Care Partnership about how we should approach service planning for the islands and how we consider the needs of island communities in our operational plans. It also is not a commitment that all islands will have the exact same local services and uniform pathways to services that are delivered on the mainland, as this would not be feasible or realistic. The Short Life Working Group decided that for the strategy, we should pull data for islands with at least 100 residents. That's because island level data is already difficult to source. In addition, 
it is not good practice to draw conclusions from very small data sets. This doesn't mean that the strategy does not apply to all inhabited islands. We also looked at national data on health outcomes, such as life expectancy and other data that is collected nationally, such as bowel screening uptake. We didn't identify systematic evidence that island communities on the whole experience worse health and social care outcomes than other Argyll and Butte residents. The work on the strategy highlights that services on our islands and pathways to services only available on the mainland are not uniform, and this is highlighted by the service and asset maps. We know that services have often evolved organically or over time without data or evidence, but this is true for a lot of our services across the whole of our Island Butte. Given the overall challenges that we face, including the need to make significant savings in the coming years, we cannot continue to make decisions in this way. The challenges identified in the strategy will not be news to you. Our island communities are characterised by ageing and declining populations, although there are some islands with growing populations, such as Jura and Gia. An increasing number of older people means an increasing demand in our services. We also have many people retiring to Island Butte, including the islands. And this sometimes means that people lack local family support when they get frail and require more help. At the same time, there are fewer people of working age and therefore fewer people who can potentially work for the Health and Social Care Partnership to meet that growing demand. Depri deprivation is linked to many health, negative health outcomes, but rural deprivation and poverty is not always visible, which makes it difficult to address. The Health and Social Care Partnership is facing significant workforce challenges, as the rest of the social work, social care and health services across the whole of the UK are. And our situation is made, made worse by a lack of affordable and suitable housing on some of the islands, which means that important roles cannot be filled. But the lack of affordable housing and suitable housing has impact on community health and wellbeing beyond attracting the right workforce. A major challenge is transport and accessing services delivered on the mainland, and residents are dependent on reliable and affordable transport, particularly a reliable ferry service and in some places flights. In addition, there is often a lack of good onward public transport options, which means cars are essential. Many islands experience an influx of visitors over the summer months, which puts additional pressure on services. We've developed an, a draft action plan based on the main themes that we have identified so far. The list also includes a number of specific island related projects that the Health and Social Care Partnership is progressing. While there are a number of areas for action that are the responsibility of the Health and Social Care Partnership, there are some issues that are not within the remit of the Health and Social Care Partnership, such as housing and transport, or which can only be addressed in collaboration with our partners, such as our Gail and Butte Council and the voluntary sector. The action plan, as with the entire strategy, is not the finished product, and the current consultation is being run to understand people's priority areas better. So, what are we looking for from the consultation? We are looking for feedback about the strategy in general, feedback about the action plan, what is missing, what would island communities like to see? Did people learn something they didn't know? And what is good about island living in terms of health and wellbeing? And any information about any community initiatives that are or could support health and wellbeing and that you think we should know about. In closing, I want to sincerely thank you for listening to this webinar presentation. Your input is invaluable to us as we finalise this strategy. Together, we can ensure that the solutions we implement alongside our partners are making a real difference to our island communities. I also encourage you to submit feedback via the survey and to highlight the consultation to friends, family and colleagues that you think may be interested in providing feedback. 
please note that the consultation closes on the 7th of November 2024. We have also communicated to all island community councils to ask for feedback and canvas local opinion on the strategy. Thank you very much.